Hi, this is Dr. A, and we're going to talk a little bit about how the lungs and kidneys can help with the regulation of acid-base balance. So let's talk uh, first about breathing processes and partial pressures of gases. So air has a partial pressure of oxygen of 158 millimeters of mercury and a partial pressure of CO2 of 0.3 millimeters of mercury or almost non-existent. So this is the air that you are breathing into your lungs, is coming into your lungs. By the time that air reaches the alveoli, the PO2 is 104 millimeters of mercury and the PCO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury. So that's in the alveoli. So uh, then it will cross over. And so most of the oxygen is going to be able to cross over via external respiration. It's going to go from the uh, alveoli into the lungs, cap lungs capillaries. And um, then the PO2 is going to be about 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. So most of it is going to cross over, right? And the PCO2 is going to be about 40. Um, and it's just because not all of the CO2 is going to leave. Uh, and that's why, by the way, the air in the alveoli, the PCO2 is 40. Because usually the pressures on both sides of the membrane will equal out. Okay, so this is what you would expect then in an arterial sample. So um, as that blood then travels through the, um, you know, from the lungs to the heart into the left, left side of the heart and out into the aorta where the arterial blood is, this is about what you would expect to see. Then when that arterial blood reaches uh, the tissues, capillary bed of the tissues, you have internal respiration with the, which is the exchange, the delivery of uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide at the tissues. And so since the tissue environment, they use up the oxygen, the oxygen is a lot lower um, at the tissue environment, the partial pressure of oxygen drops as it's being delivered, drops to 40, from 80 to 100 to 45 millimeters of mercury. And the PCO2 then climbs to about 50 because those cells, as they've metabolized, it produce um, CO2. Now, this is what you would expect to see in venous blood, these kinds of readings right there. And then, of course, this returns via the venous blood returns to the heart and into the lungs, and then we'll pick up uh, air um, here again on the alveoli, and the cycle will start over again. So chemoreceptors, um, they're located in your arteries, um, so around the aorta, carotid arteries, and then also some central chemoreceptors in your brain. They monitor the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide in arterial blood in your body. And the main driver, though, of the breathing mechanism is going to be carbon dioxide. Um, and so, uh, but it's monitoring oxygen too. So changes in these will alert the brain to either increase or decrease the rate of breathing. Uh, usually being if you increase the carbon dioxide, you will increase the rate of breathing. And if you decrease the carbon dioxide, you're going to decrease the rate of breathing. Um, this is a quick review on um, how these gases are transported in the blood. So this is a red cell. And so um, we'll start at the lungs since we started at the lungs. So oxygen is dissolved into the blood and crosses over into the red cell and goes and binds on hemoglobin. And so that makes it oxyhemoglobin right here. There's oxyhemoglobin uh, and it's going to hold on to that oxygen until it gets to the tissues. The um, CO2 that was being that got picked up in the tissues um, is some of it is transported so it can tag on to the globin portion of uh, hemoglobin. It, it will not sit in the same spot that oxygen was in. So it, it sits on the protein portion. Uh, so some of it can tag uh, itself onto the hemoglobin, but the it's predominantly carried as uh, as bicarb. So um, CO2 as it is made into the tissues, uh, when it arrives in the lungs, either undocks from the hemoglobin that uh, was carrying it and just becomes, uh, you know, CO2 that's going to be exhaled, or um, at the lungs, the bicarb, it, it was being transported as bicarb, the bicarb will re-enter the red cell, combine with a hydrogen ion that got tagged onto a hemoglobin, when the bicarb enters chloride leaves, because we've got to maintain electrical neutrality, the bicarb picks up the hydrogen ion to become carbonic acid, and carbonic acid will dissolve into CO2 and water. And then the CO2, of course, can come out and then be breathed out. So then, of course, at the venous end, uh, or at the tissue end here, 
the at the tissues the uh, affinity of hemoglobin uh, for oxygen is going to decrease so it'll let go of the oxygen and oxygen will be able to go uh, into the tissue and into the cells uh, and there's a lot of co2 in the tissue so it will some of it will be dissolved in the plasma uh, in the blood but most of it will either come in and again tag on hemoglobin as uh, a form of carboxyhemoglobin here where it's um, uh, tagging onto the protein portion, sorry. And, but the majority of it is going to tr be transported. That's what the big arrow, the majority is going to be transported, is going to enter, the CO2 is going to enter into the red cell, it's going to combine with water from the red cell, and with carbonic anhydrase will make carbonic acid, which will split into bicarb and hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions can go tag onto the globin portion of hemoglobin because um, globin is a protein. Proteins are enteric, which means that they can pick up hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions. And so they go, they'll pick up, uh, it'll just hold on to, to that uh, hydrogen ion while it's being transported. It will kick the bicarb out and put it into plasma and bring chloride in again to maintain electrical neutrality. So bicarb and chloride make us do a switcheroo depending if they're on the tissues or the lungs and that allows um, the CO2 to be transported as bicarb uh, and then to be then in the lungs we uh, you know, convert it back to CO2 and breathe it out. So uh, ventilation does affect the pH of the blood. So first of all, obviously, O2 is inspired and diffuses from the alveoli into the blood, and CO2 goes in the opposite direction, uh, goes from the blood into the alveoli and is eliminated, but you have ventilation, so you breathe it out. So basically, you breathe in oxygen, breathe out CO2, you should know that. The result usually is a minimal change in hydrogen ion concentration between the venous and arterial circulation. But if CO2 accumulates, or if there's inadequate oxygenation, the pH can drop. Why would the pH drop? Because too much CO2 will mean too much carbonic acid, too much carbonic acid, too much hydrogen, too much hydrogen, the pH drops. Um, why would inadequate oxygenation cause a pH to drop? Because if um, your cells don't have any oxygen, enough oxygen to produce ATP via the Krebs cycle and normal cellular respiration is going to attempt to cre um, make the ATP that it needs via the anaerobic um, glycolysis and, and so anaerobic respiration. And that can create, like that creates lactic acid. Lactic acid is an acid and acids will drop the pH. Um, so the breathing mechanism, breathing basically rids the body of carbon dioxide. So uh, slow breaths will increase the dissolved carbon dioxide in the blood and uh, because that increases the amount of carbonic acid and it would lower the pH. So why would you want to lower the pH? Well, for example, if your pH was too high, then your body would decrease the breathing so that it can lower the pH back to normal. And the opposite, then hyperventilation leads to large amount of carbon dioxide being uh, expelled from the lungs, leaving the lungs, which will increase the bicarb level in the blood and the pH. And so um, why would you want to do that? So you can do that if the pH is too low, the body can hyperventilate to try to uh, raise the pH back up too. And so, uh, or sometimes, sometimes people hyperventilate because they're panicking and then that actually will increase the pH. Um, and the way you try to counter that is you make them breathe slowly, slow breaths and stuff to try to counter their um, increase in pH and lower it back down. Now, the other way we can um, modify acid-base balance is through the kidneys. And so our kidneys will regulate acid-base balance either by excreting or reclaiming acids or bases, depending on what's going on. Although um, the main job of the kidneys is usually to uh, reclaim bicarb from the glomerular filtrate uh, to prevent excessive acid gain in the blood from losing too much bicarb in the urine. So uh, there's a system in place, I'm gonna show it to you here, to, to reclaim bicarb from the filtrate and, um, put it back into the blood so that it's not lost in the urine. So again, the, that's its main function is reclaiming bicarb from the glomerular filtrate. The glomerular filtrate is what's going to eventually become urine. And in the tubular cells, which are the, the, the cells that do the reabsorption and secretion in the kidneys, the hydrogen ions are generally exchanged for sodium ions. So this is how it goes. Um, if you, if there is, um, 
right here, there's hydrogen ion, um, and there's here is the bicarb that we want to reclaim. And it, we're here, it's in the, the urine, so the glomerulofiltrate uh, that's being formed. So first of all, in order for um, this hydrogen ion, it, it comes from the, the tubular cell, it has to exchange with sodium. So hydrogen ion leaves the tubular cells, sodium enters it. There's a pump here that, that allows that. Then a hydrogen ion here can then combine with this bicarb we want to reclaim to make carbonic acid and carbonic acid and hydrase then we'll split it then into water and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide being a gas then can cross over and enter into the cell and then pick up water from the cell. Opposite happens, carbonic anhydrase is going to help combine them two to make carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then is going to split into bicarb and hydrogen ion. The bicarb now can be moved into the bloodstream and the hydrogen ion can go back and cycle again in exchange for a sodium. So um, there you go, that's your basic renal mechanism of bicarb reclaiming to uh, prevent uh, the acidification of the blood. All right, and that is it for um, acid-based regulation. Thank you.